All right, we're just going to jump in today. No need for an intro. I don't think anyone's in the chat at this point anyway. So we will just go ahead and dive into our work today. Uh, and what we're working on is uh, continuing to make uh, BrianLRobinson.com get ready to break into the top 100 of the 11 D um, leaderboard for performance. Uh, so let me go ahead and have that up so we can also uh, talk about that should anyone else join the stream later on. So let's see. Today, what we're going to be working on is inlining our CSS via includes instead of one big CSS um, file. And that should help us correct some of our speed issues around that. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull up our current version live on the site. Actually, we now have, uh, let's see. Theoretically, I ran some tests yesterday. So we'll run it again, see how it's running today. There's the CLI for Lighthouse, which is actually how Zach is running his, um, his testing. So let's take a look. All right. So it generates this file. Let's open that file up and see what we get. All right. Getting a worse accessibility score than usual, so that's interesting. But we're at 94 on our performance, so let's see what they really want us to do. Uh, Pre-connect, we set up yesterday, but... Oh, it's because I'm live, and so now detects that Twitch API stuff. So maybe we'll look at doing that as well. Um, but eliminate render blocking resources. So both our style at CSS uh, and our font that's being imported uh, are both in that. So theoretically, um, I can save 800 milliseconds by inlining most of my CSS, especially in like a critical CSS style. Uh, keep request counts low. Let's see. Let's see, style sheets are there, and that's those two. Uh, one thing that we can p potentially do is bring our main font imports into our CSS too to, to lower that. Main thread works a little rough. Style layout being a big part of that. Consider time spent parsing, compiling, executing JavaScript. You may find delivering smaller JavaScript payloads. I mean, that's up there, but it's not quite as big a style and layout. And I'm wondering if that is what we can fix with our inlining, with our critical CSS there. Uh, chaining critical requests. So that's going to be this font, looks like the main thing there. So yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at doing some inline for our CSS. So the main thing we need to do is start breaking out our CSS into includes. So I'm going to set up a new folder in our includes, which is our CSS, and we'll have a base.css in here. Uh, let's break this up into two sides of our window here so we can kind of see. And I'm going to grab everything that's kind of, that I know is going to be on every single page, and we'll put that in there. Nav stuff goes. It's gonna go in there. Our base, our logo, banner. Banner's probably not. So let's grab all this, paste it over here into our base.css include, and then theoretically we can go into our uh, base.nunjux. And we can have this be, I've got this CSS override block, um, but let's go ahead and have a um, base uh, block base CSS. And block. And then we'll put in here an include to um, CSS slash base dot CSS. Save both of these in and see what we get. 
So now if we view all that's being inlined up here now, um, so that's the request is still there, but it is at least inline for this. So all of this is kind of our critical CSS path. Uh, so we can render things a little faster for that. Uh, it doesn't require going out to a server to find things to, to handle that render. All right, so, oh, that's interesting. Huh. Okay, so I guess we need a safe on that. Oh, I've got an extra, an extra bracket there. And then we'll give it safe to let know it's code that can be rendered. Hmm. Very interesting. This is probably... Whoa. Okay, we had some issues here. Let's see. Rendering Nginx template. I guess we can't do a we can't do a safe inside the base.css. That makes some sense. And then that's coming back up. Let's close out that, run it again. Yeah, but see, it's still coming through like that. All right, so now we're gonna go cheat off of Andy Bell a little bit and see how he's running that. Uh, so he's got his includes and then his layouts. Right, set CSS, and that's his default stuff, and then he includes that. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so you have to set it as basically a string and then render it safe. Um, so we'll run that set CSS and set the include comes in here. And then we can come down and we can say, actually this would have to be inside of a style block anyway. I don't know why I was thinking it wouldn't be. We can actually probably render this entire thing in a style. And then this will have to render as safe. Anything? Set CSS. Oh, and then we actually have to render the CSS. There we go. So this will just be CSS. Hmm. Right, let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's not in that style block. Do we have an error? We do. Okay. Template names must be a string. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is a string. Template names must be a string. CSS, base, that CSS, render error. Line 12. Hmm. Template names be a string. Where is that coming from? Because this is a string. Include. Oh, in template error. Unknown path. 
Oh, I still have this safe in here on the include, which is not where we want it. We want it on CSS down here. There we go. All right. Got that set up properly there. So theoretically on every page that loads at the top I mean, the only downside is potentially this takes us outside of our uh, service worker uh, but I think that's probably okay because we can still render this into that CSS file potentially um, potentially uh, so let's see that's here and then, let's see, I don't think I can do a conditional inside that set, though maybe I can. Maybe I can put a block in there. That'll be interesting to find out. Uh, but let's go ahead and make a new file in our CSS for our banner. And let's grab our banner stuff. Everything that is banner and just banner can come over here. We have some homepage specific stuff that we'll get into. Let's check to see if there's any other banner content. No. All right. So save that, save this, and then in base, we will include that in our set as well. Uh, include CSS slash banner dot CSS. And now when it reloads, we should get that banner stuff. There we go, back in. So that's there. Still works over here. And then we can come back in and we can start looking at the next set of things we need to worry about. And that's going to be uh, home page. So home page title, home page headshot, home articles, all this can come into its own new file, new include. So new include here, this will be homepage.css. You should be over here. Paste that in, save it. And then this include, I suppose, technically can move into our homepage and we can put that inside of our, okay, let's see. Block CSS override. Maybe we'll call it specific CSS. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move that down here, leave that alone. And then let's see if we can embed a block inside of a set. I don't know if that'll work or not. This will be uh, page CSS. And then each of our pages can have that and, I, and like we can see how that renders out. So if we come over to our, we'll have our homepage.nunjux, home.nunjux. And then we can up here have that block. And then inside that block, we can do new includes potentially. So we can include um, CSS slash homepage.css I think it was is that right yeah homepage.css oh doesn't like something unknown block page css and that's on our trouble rendering category.nunjux CSS banner.css. Okay, so it doesn't like that coming into our block, maybe. Let's see, home.nunjux. What if we remove that? No, it still doesn't like that. 
I'd love to keep all this in one style block because I think that'll be better on the render, but it looks like I might not be able to do that. Let's see, do you like that a little better? You do. Uh, Nunjux block inside a set. If header block that else, checking if a variable exists within the context, not a block. You should somehow use get block to determine if there's a block of that name. So I suppose what I can do is we could make make this entire set into a block, and then we can call. Uh, that's not going to work. Uh, let's see, nunjux um, add to a set variable. Let's see what this gives us. This looks like it might be, no. Hmm. So variable and a macro, no. How can I find global variables? Set macro variable. Uh, let's see, nunjux concat to set. Yeah, let's see if that's in Jinja, no. So I have a function. I suppose it could be, depending on when things render, it could be that I reset CSS to CSS and then the other stuff. That sounds super iffy. Uh, let's see. So if in here, what if, let's see. What if all this is inside of this block? And then we come in, that should be fine, right? Save, loading, okay. Um, and then we can also have, yeah, this is where we kind of were getting, and that's fine, that, that should be fine, I think. So we'll do block, um, page CSS and block and then on our home.nunjux we can have block Daddy, hey pal show me oh my goodness is this a new one yeah I just ripped it out of the, of the pocket hole. well you did a very good job and that looks so good Marshall's very red and orange All right, let's get back to it. So we got a block. The block's name was what? It was page CSS. Oops, <laughs> this goes here. And of course I have a mismatch on that tag, which I don't like having that end. And then let's see what we got. Um, I kind of see. All right, let's do this. Let's just see what happens. Let's bring this up here. And then let's see if we can render CSS inside of a recursively set CSS. Uh, so we can say um, a new set tag, CSS, and set. And then we'll say render CSS. And then let's bring in that include. Include. Uh, CSS slash, what was this? Homepage? Homepage.css. Alright, no errors. But does it render my CSS? No, it does not. So that tells me that the rendering order for the way things actually happen uh, is in an order that I wasn't expecting. The includes 
The includes render, I thought it started at the most base level, but probably starts, yeah, I thought it would start at home, render this. Hmm. Page CSS. All right, that's fine. That's, that's not that big a deal. Um, page, we'll set page CSS as a variable, uh, and then that will come in here. Page CSS. It's not ideal. That doesn't feel quite right in terms of how I'd like to do it, but that's okay. Because there it is. That all appears to be as I expect it to be. So that means we can set this same style on every page. And really at that point, the, the variables and stuff don't matter. Um, so we set all of our base CSS up in base, and then we can move into each of these. And one of the things uh, that Andy had, which I'm going to go ahead and maybe bring over, is a, is a new filter, uh, which is a CSS minifying filter. Uh, which is a relatively simple one. We can actually just kind of do it pretty quick here. Um, it uses clean CSS and basically just minifies the code, uh, which is kind of handy. Uh, so let's see, how do I have all this set up in this one? Do I have... Looks like I don't have a full setup for uh, my filter, so my filter will just go inside of here so we'll do a config add filter config dot add filter how am I doing the date filter must be a plugin I guess uh, yeah all right so add filter We'll call it CSS min, and it'll take a function, which will take the um, string or CSS code, I think is what Andy called it. Um, and then inside of that, we don't need to export. We basically just need to return a new instance there. Uh, so we'll need to go ahead and install clean CSS, npm install save clean CSS. And so basically on that string, every time we're, we're doing that CSS string, we can, um, we can minify it, which is handy. I feel like I've seen Andy do bigger stuff with the CSS. I wonder if he's got the Piccolilly code up somewhere. Highly it didn't have it. Um, let's see. Personal site. Let's see if his personal site gets a little bit more in depth at that. Highly it uses some SAS stuff though, so it doesn't do much of this. Uh, time Beetle. Let's see if uh, his reply guy site does it. Source CSS. Okay, it looks like it might. Uh, so let's go to his layouts, base. Let's see, block head, find CSS, set core styles. Huh. So how's that work? Now we're going down a rabbit hole. Data, CSS, browser config. All right, let's go all the way up and take a look at his 11 config and see if there's something happening in there. Cause that's super interesting that he basically has an array of files. Um, So 
so that was in source, that was in layout, base, set core styles equal to an array of file names, core styles, and then he runs a helper he's called get CSS, where he, okay, he grabs core styles and then layout styles. And I'm sure layout styles is being set in the individual layout. All right, so let's take a look at his helpers and see what we get there. Probably not. Okay, so post stream logic tweak. So no helper in there. That's because these are just straight up helpers for JavaScript. So let's take a look in here. I'm listening, pal. Um, I'm pretty hungry today. I'm a hung. I'm 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 a eating machine, so I want to eat a lot of things. Sure, can I can I, understand that. I want more. What? What do you think? Hmm, I wonder. You have a banana. Hmm. I think. More sub the was taller before and got cooked and got some and then it was and then it was liquid. Like what? Like applesauce like that. Like apples and then you cook it and then smash it, then applesauce. Mm hmm But you had applesauce at breakfast. Oh. And you actually had granola which is full of sugar. So you don't need applesauce right now. What about hummus and pretzels? I can give you a few hummus and pretzels. You want that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. All right, hold on. I'll go make it. You go sit. So let's find that helper, wherever that helper is. Okay, so here's that. All right. Uglify CSS, get CSS, core styles, layout styles, let CSS equal an empty string, let partials equals equal an array, if core styles, if layout styles, that's gonna destructure those. And then, okay, interesting. We might refactor into that at some point. That makes a lot of sense. And that does like exactly what I want to have happen. Um, CSS equals, CSS plus equals file. Okay, so then he also adds the, adds these two, which is his reset and his tokens, which are design system things. And then if there's length to the partials, then put all of the content of each of them in. Now that makes a lot of sense. We're grabbing it. <laughs> Let's see. We want in our source, he's got in his data, which is interesting. We can put in our data. I don't see any problem with that. Um, new file, let's see, what was it? He called it helpers.js. And that exports something. Yeah, it exports out the get CSS function so that we can use that in our layouts. And then we also need to make sure that we've got Uglify CSS. FS should be default to node, so we should be good with that. Um, so we'll do uh, npm install save uglify CSS. Grab that on down too. So let's take a look. 
Come on. There we go. All right. So I like a lot of what's going on here. Core style. So we get layout or get uh, get CSS. So we'll come back over. Uh, we don't need this anymore because that's going to happen in our function. And that means that we... Okay means in our package.json we can also remove our call for clean CSS. Which do we even have that? Did that go away? There it is. Don't need that. Alright. So we have helper.js. Save that in. So now we're gonna call that in that same spot in our base. And we're going to pass it an array of the files. So, let's see exactly what he had going on there again. So, our source includes base. So, he sets core styles there. And then I assume on his layout, he sets, yes, layout styles. And then when he calls that helper, all of that is ready to go. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and let's grab all this. We'll keep the CSS override. Let's move this up here to the top since it's a variable. We're going to set our, call it core CSS, I like that as well. And that is going to be equal to an array of files. So basically instead of includes, we're going to use strings of those files. Now I don't know if those file paths are going to be correct. So I think components intro.css okay, so that's in there that's fine data let's read that helper again okay so save that that'll fail I think yeah that's fine uh, so in our helper function we need to come in and I'm kind of curious to know what our dir name is here. Console log dir name. Uh, it doesn't like something. Unknown block tag and set. So let's see. Based on nunjux, I have a random end set here. Save that, see what kind of error we get. No errors this time. Things are fully broken, which is perfectly fine. Not completely unexpected there. Daddy? Yeah, Pop. Are we in our hummus for my hummus or trestle? Oh, no. Well, that's still pretty yummy. No, I want hummus and trestle. Mmm. I can understand that. So I have to put more hummus on my plate if I want hummus and trestle. Oh yeah. Or nibble. I'm not actually running that function. That's right. That makes sense. Uh, so in our style, let's see. We're not actually running that helper function yet. Alright, go sit. I'll be there in a minute. So in base.nunjux, coming down here, styles, we run helpers.getcss. Uh, get oh, see, that's, that's a really clever use of the, uh, the fact that, that um, data can be a JavaScript file. All right, so he had that inside of a style he did. So this will be helper, I think I've just got helper dot get CSS and then it'll take core CSS and layout CSS all right errors are fine no such file or directory all right so you can see here that dir name is 
not exactly where we want it to be. That's fine. All right, hold on one second. We're gonna go get some more hummus. All right, hummus successfully retrieved. So, let's see, what were we looking at? Data, helpers, what's he doing with that their name? And why is mine not what I expect it to be? Let's see. Okay, how does it do, why, why has he got temp files? interesting so we come back into our layouts base passing see we're passing directly at the root which is interesting core styles got global and utilities and then helpers that get CSS he's passing those in but is he doing anything else stuff site name okay all that makes sense all right then somewhere in the helpers he's got to be doing some sort of transformation so uglify is fine process string that's fine for each partial. All right, so somewhere along the way, he's moving things. So let's look at his package.json, see what's happening when he actually runs things. Is there any script scripts? All right, start is run, npm run CSS and run serve. So CSS, and then he does a CSS move. Oh, I see. So he's, he's, he's kind of cleaning that as he goes and putting it into the place he expects it to be. He's taking source CSS recursively, putting it into source data temp. And then because he's running that, he has to, to do something with based on nunjucks to reload. That seems over-engineered to me, so maybe we can do that simpler. Who thinks the title is not about food? Okay. Um, why, um, can you tell Mommy on your phone, um, and, and see if she's ready for me to tell, so she can tell me what this food or those from, and my foot is not hurting. I'm super glad that your foot's not hurting. Because but it takes a long time for putting the ice pack on. So the thing about mommy is if her door's closed, it means it's quiet time for mommy. Okay. So you go play in the living room for a little bit. Because it's just curious to see if the door is open or closed. You can go look, but don't open it. Leave it closed. Let's see. So, maybe we can go looking, but the, the dir name, all right, let's take a look at that.
So, let's see. I mean, maybe that's not completely over engineered, I suppose. Because those helpers are hanging out in the data directory. Right, so let's see. So really it's expecting something in here. Can it read up a layer, a level? So first we actually don't need these, right? Because we haven't done that yet. Um, so what if we always knew that our, we can set a const of our, basically our, where our CSS lives. So CSS dir equals, it needs to go up a level and then it needs to dive into our includes and into our CSS, I think. Let's see. And then in our base. So then we don't need the CSS on these. Slash. And then our CSS dir comes down here. And when we're doing this, we're actually going to be looking for, let's see, I uh, don't need that. This will be uh, CSS dir, I think is what I said. CSS dir. So that's still probably going to be pitching a fit, and that's fine. Oops. see running it again come on show me the air give me the air need to see the air there we go uh, all right no directory includes base so um, node FS relative path accessing file with relative path We can use path to join the path of the directory in which helper one. So, dir name up. All right, so this guy has file structure. So he wants uh, to access foobar JSON in helper. Okay, so he's got to go from helper, he's got to go up a level and then down into config. So yeah, this path.join is what I want, I think. Uh, so, let's see. So our CSS dir will become a path.join and it will take the dir name and then up a level, down into includes, and then into CSS. And we'll do a path.join on those inside of our loop, I think, for each of the files. Current directory, up a level, and then back down. So, We'll do down here. So this will be CSS path. CSS path equals uh, path dot join. And that'll be CSS dir and partial. And then we'll read that file at that path. I think. Let's see what we get on that. Hey, Demetrius, how's it going? Welcome to the stream today. Appreciate you stopping by. Path is not defined. 
Oh, because, you know, you gotta require it. That makes sense. Uh, let's see. Const path equals. Now, is path, I think that's just probably a default node thing. Could be wrong about that. Take a look. How are you doing this morning, Demetrius? Midtown Hall. You mean you're in the middle of a town hall? Ah, nice. Nice, very cool. Well, I hope I provide you some sort of entertainment. We're, uh, nothing else, there's some tunes in the background. All right, so that actually is now rendering. It's not giving me, oh, it is giving me some CSS. Look at that. All right. So now we've got our core styles. We also need to render out our, uh, our base styles. So we need to pass that helper function uh, this as well. So we're going to set in uh, set. <laughs> glad, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it, Demetrius. Uh, set our layout styles equal to an array. And currently that array just has this string inside of it. And we don't need this block anymore. So let's save that and see what we get. All right, no errors, but no CSS either. Hmm. What are we getting in our CSS at this point? It's been uglified. We're getting banner. We're getting a lot of stuff, but am I not doing it as safe? I guess it's the next thing to look at. I am, but I don't need to be doing CSS. Which is probably where I'm getting some of those styles. I don't need this block up here. And let's see. Helper get CSS. What's that return? I suppose is the next thing I need to think about. I think I do need to render it as safe, but what am I returning? Returning uglified process string. So yeah, it's just a string coming out, which means that we need to render it as code. So we need to pass that the safe filter. Well, we've gotten some, which probably just means that I don't have my proper home page styles coming in. Because that's where that's where the banners. Well, let's see. Banner home page. So if we take a look, where should this be coming in? Do I have the right variable name? Am I saying the right variable name? Of course not. There we go. Nothing. Eh? Ah, error. Okay. Error, error. No such file or directory inside of include CSS, CSS. So we're duplicating that because I forgot I changed the way that works. So we just need to render out the CSS file name now. There we go. All right, so we now have a working uh, helper function there that is rendering out the styles directly into the page. So now we can go back to working on breaking up our, uh, our style sheet. Hold on one second for me. All right, so let's take a look here. So now every time I make a change, I'll add something to the layout styles or something to the base styles. So let's see. Get messages up since I'm getting messages. All right, 
so we have our blog content. Let's see what all is going on in here. Let's see, blog, blog quote, content for child. So that's all for a blog. Category list. These are all things needed for all of our blog pages. Category list. Related list. That's needed for that. Article is needed in there. Article description. Alright, so let's grab all of this. Everything from here to the top is now going into a blog.css include. Let's see how bad that breaks stuff across the board here. Some broken stuff on the home page, which is interesting, which means we've got some global styles to worry about there. Which again is a, another testament to uh, making componentized versions of your code. This is all broken, which is expected. All right, so we need to come into our includes, into our CSS, new file, uh, articles.css, bring that in, and now wherever we need those styles, we're gonna import out into layout styles. So I'm not gonna worry about the home page right now, but we have blog, which we're gonna do the same thing on Layout styles will be what I call article.css. Nope. Should probably put a protection in here that if it doesn't exist, it shouldn't error. It should just uh, put an error into the console and keep moving. Uh, let's see. CSS articles.css. There we go. Come back over here. Not getting what we expect. Oh, because we need to put this also on our, where is it, post.nunjux as well. Now it's possible I can move that into an include where it needs to be, but we'll see. So that fixes up things here. All that's fixed. And then we can come over to the home page. I know. I can't do anything about that, bud. But you can look at my website while I work on it. As long as you promise not to hit buttons. Or do you want some Ninja Turtles? Do you want some Ninja Turtles? You can borrow Daddy's Ninja Turtles. Well, when you think about that, you can let me know. Hey, 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 what did I say about touching buttons? I want to let your website go down. It doesn't go down anymore. It's as far down as it goes. What do you think about the website? Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can it go higher? Nope, that's as high as it goes. Oh, maybe I can make it go low. Maybe. Can it go even lower? Nope, that's as low as it goes. But what about go left or right? What about go left or right? I want it to go left or right. Well, my website doesn't go left or right. It only goes up and down. No, they're going to hang out with me on the desk. No, 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 just hang out. Can you stay here with Red? Okay, Daddy? They can be where they live. Okay. 
All right, so let's see. We've got, what do we just do? We got our layout styles are coming into the base. Now I think we need to break up our article styles. We probably need to start looking at making it into a component. So new folder, components. Oh, that's no good, he left the Ninja Turtles behind. I can only imagine what he's going to do now. So let's say we need article promo, maybe, dot CSS. Let me double check that he is not bothering. All right, so I don't have quite enough workspace here. Article promo, let's bring our, where was that? Let's close out our right hand side over here. And let's grab articles.css. All right, so our blog content stuff is all related to the actual layout and the styles for the actual blog content. So that's good to stay here. Ad space actually exists on multiple pages. So let's grab that out and we'll make a component for ad space. All right, save that. Let's see. Blog content media query category list. I don't know, does that exist on multiple pages? Let's take a look. No, I think it's just on the blog detail page. Uh, we still may need to look at breaking that out. Related list. Related list is at the bottom of each of these blog posts. So let's see. Oh no, it's not the right hand side. Uh, that's the only place that that's happening, but that's probably, actually that's in the uh, with the ad space a little bit. So that'll be, um, related list.css of course it came in here let's grab all the related list information here we go that can come in here article date article description these are things that are necessary for those promos so grab that that goes into article promo and we can include the article promo on multiple pages Let's close out here. And now let's think about what needs to go where. So this would have probably been better to have done, you know, from the start, but refactoring is not that big a deal on this. Can y'all even hear me? There we go. Don't know if my audio's even been up, but you never know. All right, cool. So uh, we've got article description. We've got, let's see. All right, so we need to go back to home. Actually, one of the things we could probably add in the base would be those styles that are on all of it. So face.nunjux, our core CSS can be that art, that, um, thank you, thank you, uh, article promo. So that's in components, article promo.css, and then blog needs article, that actually doesn't need articles, it needs article promo, so components, actually this is I guess, article promo dot CSS, it needs add space dot CSS and related list dot CSS. And then let's see, 
Ah, I was wrong. That is the blog page. So we actually don't need articles.css, I don't think. And we don't need add space or related list. So it can just be article promo, I think. Uh oh. Error. All right, let's see. Article promo.css can't find that. Oh, because it's components. That's right. Components. All right, better. And then our post. Let's see. Hey, Tropical, how's it going? Glad you've joined us today. I'm hoping my audio is coming through. I was a little bit worried when I did some weird stuff earlier. Um, glad to hear you're hanging in there. It's it's an interesting world we live in at this point, isn't it? Um, so probably didn't catch the beginning of the stream. I started a little bit early today. We're uh, still working towards our 11D goal of being in the top 100 sites. So right now I'm breaking up my CSS into critical CSS units and componentizing it. And I'm actually embedding that directly on each of my pages instead of having theoretically my style.css. So we can remove a lot of that. Um, and I'm minifying it. I'm also, I don't know if I'll have time today, but we're gonna use some HTML minification as well. Uh, includes CSS article promo. That's right, I need components in front of all of these. Component slash. For each of these right. Did that error yes what else is erroring here no such file component article promo is it comp it's probably components plural components 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 how are you able to include a component in an article with its accompanying so it's not actually the uh, the full component, I'm actually just, I've componentized the CSS, right? I've broken the CSS up. And there's actually a function, I'll grab the uh, the link. I'm completely and utterly ripping it off of Andy Bell. Um, he has a helper function in his thanksforthereply.com site, uh, which I found to be super interesting. Uh, and so of course, completely uh, stole it. Let me grab this link, uh, it's in source data. And because 11, he's got data files that can be just pure JavaScript, we can include this like a variable on the page, but here's the link to this. It's really, really interesting uh, how he's kind of broken it up. Uh, originally I was using C the CSS files as includes uh, and that was working out okay, but I was getting in the weeds quite a bit. This works exactly the way my brain wants it to work, I think, we'll see. Uh, obviously you still have a couple issues with it, but let's see, let's see how we're doing here. Refresh this page. This looks like it should. And then home page. These look like they should. Excellent. Blog page. Looking like it should. So at this point, I'm only including the CSS that I need for each of them uh, across the board. I've got a set of base on the home page. So what we're doing uh, is on our base.nunjax, we set a core CSS array. Uh, which is a series of file uh, files, which I guess I don't need this anymore. I want to include that on various pages. Um, so you can see when I save this, it's actually going to break my home page. Not break it, but see how the date got a little bit bigger and these styles got a little bit different. Uh, I can actually come in and I'm going to set a different variable on each of my layouts, which is the layout specific CSS. Um, so on our homepage, we have one, which I need to go ahead and open up home.nunjux. And then at the top of here, we're setting layout styles, which is another array, uh, which we'll go ahead and break this up onto separate lines here. Oops, and then this is going to be components slash article promo.css. And so now that goes and that helper function goes and it reads those files in node and it concatenates CSS and then uglifies the CSS. So it minifies it and does all the like white space and all that. Uh, and then I dump that out in our base in a style tag here. So helper.getCSS 
uh, the core CSS it needs and the layout specific styles. And then I run it through the save filter, which dumps it out as code. Um, so now those dates change. Now, theoretically, these might change. Like if I change these styles in that uh, CSS file, they'll change here as well. Um, so yeah. Um, and we're just, I'm basically, I'm going through and I am um, grabbing st from style.css, putting things where they need to go. Um, so this is actually some homepage styles for that hire me promo area, I think. So we'll grab this and we'll make it. So now this should completely break that area or at least maybe not completely break it, but there you go. Some things changed here. So that means we're going to go in, we're going to create a new component, which will be our hire me dot CSS. Save that in there. And then anywhere we're going to use this component, we're going to include it at the top in those style concatenation pieces. Uh, and so that's going to be on our home page. It'll be a new one here. And the cool thing about this is since it's order, it, it's it's concatenating these files in this order, like I can keep my uh, my CSS cascade that way. And I'm sorry things are getting blurry. I guess my uh, connection's not great right now. Uh, so this will be components slash hire me dot CSS. This should reload once it's done with that. And those are back. Yeah, the cascade. I mean, and depending on how you on how you componentize your CSS, like it's not the biggest deal. But yeah, this way it allows you to to adjust that on the fly too. So if you need your cascade to be different on a page, you can do that uh, just by changing the order of that. Um, all right. So next up in our styles, I'm skipping over some of this stuff because they're kind of utilities, which we're gonna move. Auto grids utility class projects item. So this is actually a hidden page on my site that I kept because there was some SEO value to it. Um, I think I'm doing something similar in my blog, but with gulp processing multiple style sheets and then on pages. Yeah, that's pretty pretty much pretty much the same thing. Um, except for there's, there's no extra um, uh, build step at that point. It's just in the way that Eleven D works, uh, it does that because it's an 11D data file at that point. So we'll go ahead and have this be a root level in the CSS. This is all in 11D, yeah, exactly. Um, so this will be projects.css. And then let's go to our projects page. Do I even have a nunjack file for that? Project list.html, okay. Close all these so we can see a little better. Presentations, portfolio. Portfolio is just using base. That's unfortunate. Um, I suppose in that include, I could I could do that exact same thing. Um, so we can go to project list, and then since it's an include, I can just toss it up here. Uh, so we have a set variable, set layout CSS equal to an array that is a string of what? String of projects.css, I think. Yeah. Oh, we didn't like that. Tag not found. Now that could be because this is rendering liquid instead of nunjux. So what we can do, I think, in theory, is just rename this and have this render out as nunjux. Nope, certainly didn't like that. And then source portfolio HTML. Yeah, this needs to be nunjux. 
still doesn't like it. Set tag not found. Maybe I can't do that inside of, a, inside of an include. That's fine. Uh, we could actually do it in here, I believe. Um, as long as this is assumed to be nunjux, which it's not currently. Because most HTML pages on my site, since I haven't specified, actually render out in uh, um, in Liquid, because that's the the default there. Still not liking that. But now, unknown cycle, of course. Because uh, all right, maybe we'll just do something different with this page. Let's go ahead and have this go back to being .html, and then project list .nunjux. We'll want this to be HTML again as well. Still getting an error. All right, portfolio .html. Look up, and that's because Liquid handles its includes differently. We don't want it to be a string, we want it to be the path. There we go. So unfortunately, it means my portfolio page, which again is not a super important page. Um, I may have to think about differently. Although currently it's working even though I've removed the, that style, which is interesting. Um, we'll move our, our site footer information into our base CSS. Even though theoretically we've moved that into a footer component, I suppose, but I am running low on time for today. So we'll just move it there. And then what else do we have in here? These again are global styles, but they're global. Let's see. Got this. These can go into base as well. Again, we can have a form.css in the future. Let's go ahead. Let's grab the rest of this and we'll put it in base for now and we'll break it up from there. We'll have like a vendor area and all this can go in the vendor area. But I'd like to get us completely off of this before the end of the stream today. So that's still a lot to be loading on every page. Uh, hey Vinny, how's it going? Uh, you've, you've caught me streaming, but you caught me streaming for the next five minutes. Uh, <laughs> so great timing. Uh, I appreciate you being in here. I appreciate you stopping by for at least a few minutes uh, that I'm going to be streaming uh, now. But let's take a look. This should... Oh, uh, things are broken. Interesting. This is broken, which I didn't expect that to be broken. What class is that? Oh, that's those projects. Ha! Huh, I see. Alright. Let's come back here. Let's grab this that also needs to go into our base um, and again I want to break these up uh, a little bit more and we'll do that on Thursday Let's see let's put it here with the other project stuff let's see what this gives me there we go that's back how I want it all right, so theoretically now I can remove my link to my styles from base and everything should just kind of work. Where is that? That CSS. We still have that font family call, which we'll have to get rid of in some way too. Delete, save. Everything's looking good here. Everything's looking good here. Form looks fine. Speaking. This is looking fine as well. Do need to remove that at some point. 
Uh, and then we'll see if I need to remove the other ones. Still haven't heard about that yet. Um, that all is as I expect, although that button's a little wide. I think that's just a normal break though. Free advice. That's all as I expect it to be. Yeah, and today I started about 30 minutes before I usually start too. Um, so, no, I feel you. Uh, what, what kind of time zone are you in, Vinny? Where, where, are you, where are you at? West Coast? Let's see. That's all fine. Okay. So, let's go ahead and push this up to the branch and let's test it out in Lighthouse and see what we get. Uh, commit am inlines all CSS. Should probably have done that too. There we go. Get push. Yeah, West Coast, I understand. I feel you. Um, I'm trying to like straddle a line, like, because I know occasionally I get a few people from over over in Europe and and, uh, and farther uh, tuning in. So like trying to figure out the right time. Yeah, yeah, being a night owl, definitely uh, early streams don't necessarily work out, especially when they're, I guess right now, what, it's um, just about nine there. All right, so let's take a look. Let's go on up to Netlify, grab our new deploy URL test that and then we'll call it a good day it's been been a, a good uh, a good push on this uh, performance branch and in case you're wondering Vinny I'm, I'm working right now 11 which is my static site generator has a built with page uh, and so this week one of the things I'm working on is getting my site uh, up into the top 100 so right now I'm here uh, at rank 187 and I'd love to see that in the uh, in the double digits uh, True, it is always day somewhere in the world. Um, that is very true. Uh, so, when our deploy finishes, let's grab the URL, and we're gonna run the CLI from um, terminal, so Lighthouse, new deploy. And let's see what we get. What do you mean by how do you game that? Uh, there's actually, it's not gaming it, right? I'm actually going in and improving the performance of my site to get better uh, ranking. So uh, Zach Le uh, Leatherman, who who is the guy behind uh, Eleven D, uh, built this page like a week or so ago, a week and a half ago, something like that, uh, and runs uh, five, I think, different uh, speed tests on it uh, and takes the average of them. Um, and so looking at this, I think my performance earlier was at 94, which I can look at that as well. Uh, so we, we've we gotten up to 97 and let's see, we still need to do those pre-connects. But now let's grab the last run that I also did. So we did open, that one was from today, earlier today. So uh, it was 94 then too. Um, However, let's see if my speed index got better. Speed index is 1.9 seconds instead of 2.8, which, hey, I'll take that. And then we had this down here. Let's see, the minimized thread. We no longer had that minimized thread. So my layout work is, is happening much quicker because of the way I'm doing the CSS. Um, we still have this, the font family, so we'll have to deal with that at some point as a render blocking resource. Um, but, we're now up to 97 from uh, yesterday before I did my image work, I was at 80. And then uh, now we're up to 94 and I've improved my speed index from 2.8 seconds to 1.9, as well as completely destroyed my max potential first input delay uh, from there. Um, the thing I did with my images yesterday and be sure to check out the VOD because uh, I did a lot of work on that was I brought in Cloudinary as a CDN for my images. Also, uh, I've got different uh, responsive image stuff set up with source set. Uh, so I'm only ever pulling in the right file size for all that. 